Many people don't realize that they are assigned an angel at their birth. They are always assigned a birth archangel and it relates to the path of their life. For example, I have a birth angel, and that birth angel is powerful in the Lord's house, and it represents a particular type of a ability or skill set. And the truth is, I am mentored by that angel and his, let's say, legion. How many people are in the legion depends on, or how many people, how many spirits, how many souls, how many spirit guides, whatever you call the spirit world, is in that legion is based on my humility and submission to the Lord. Obviously, if I don't care about God, if I'm an atheist and agnostic and I just play around and don't think about God at all, I may have very few angels around me. The deeper, however, that you get into the Word, the more you become a little bit more evangelical, the more that you care about God in other people's lives, your angel sets are openly longer. They, In other words, you have more numbers behind you and around you. There's a marvelous coin that the Catholics provide that says Jesus is inside me, Jesus is beside me, Jesus is in front of me, Jesus is behind me, and it goes on through the whole knotting of that coin where there's different gaps and what we would call dead space to create that to be a fine thing. Unfortunately, they don't sell them anymore at the Holy Cross where I used to buy them all the time and make them into fobs and necklaces, but they're marvelous to remind you of what you should be remembering throughout time. The truth is that an angel can tap you. And when an angel taps you, it feels like a bop on the head. It can be either hard or it can be soft. I can recall when I was driving through the countryside looking for my friend's house who lives out in the boondocks and I was falling asleep. The angels kept bopping me in the back and then wake the fuck up is basically what they were saying to me. Because I could have run off the road into a cornfield. And even though I had a marvelous 4x4, it's still not great to do that. And I might have been traveling at that time in a rental vehicle because of the abuse of my original vehicle where someone caused an accident on my life and then I got ruined by the sheriff who had information not right. Anyway, despite the truth and the facts that have happened and occurred to me that are not perspectives, that are actual facts for me, I can tell you that angels can also slam you to the floor. We also have heard of many stories from people who have you've ever participated in a church where angels have saved them on a slippery road or ice and whatnot. But in my case, I was slammed to the floor in a Panera when I was about to disobey the Lord. Now, you may not want to believe that. Other people don't want to believe that. But I don't care what you believe. I know what I felt and I know what physically happened to me. And I bet you there's a security tape somewhere because they do have security cameras there that would have seen that happening to me. Other people might say, oh, it's just a seizure, oh, it's a heart attack, oh, is it? No, it wasn't. I was pretty miffed off, and I wanted to go outside and declare my love to someone, and God said, no, she's not right now, and she cannot handle it now. And I got schooled in every way. Now, that's just a part of a story. Now, you can either believe in that for God's glory, or you can take it for granted that if you are getting smacked or tapped, either in the head or on the shoulder, or in some way and you feel a tap in some way and you turn around and no one is there that is the Holy Ghost saying hey stop that stop what's happening in your mind or stop what you're about to say stop you've gone too far this time you see angels don't usually cross that spiritual physical line unless you're doing something immoral on the one possibility or you're doing something out of line in God's house and it's not out of line for me to love someone. It was just out of the wrong moment of time for me to declare it. And I had to wear that. So let's just talk about you. How many times have you been tapped on the head, tapped on the back, tapped on the forearm, tapped on the shoulder? You turned and there's been no one there. And you're thinking you're being played with by your kids or your husband, someone who's visited your house. But the truth is nobody's home. They're not there. The liar in you has got to stop yourself immediately. And submit yourself to God and say, God, what did I do? What should I do? How should I be? You see, a liar will continue to abuse. A liar will continue to poke at something that's not their right to talk about, know about, and speak about because they're out of line. You see, a liar wants to say, you must go get this shot. And the truth is, you don't know what God has in plan for that person. You also don't know whether or not that person has gotten one or not and it's none of your fucking business whether or not they have or not. 
at the same time it's very possible that that shot could do detrimental things to that person and God has said absolutely not you see man is not God and woman is not God but there are men and women in America that want to play God in other people's lives and want to continue to psychologically emotionally and spiritually abuse family friends relatives neighbors and strangers with their use of their version of God 